All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Cholenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Cholenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I'm going to call this podcast is, are you not who you think you are? So I'm just going to kind of go back real quick on what I noticed about myself over the years. And one of the things I noticed about myself is I'm, I'm not, I don't look a lot of times like I think I look feel or think I look, if that makes sense. Uh, Because I was always so small and scrawny, I always feel small and scrawny for some reason. I don't feel weak though. I feel kind of strong and it's kind of a weird identity. I call it reverse anorexism where I was always, no matter how big I got, I looked in the mirror and I felt, I looked little, but that doesn't mean I was weak. It's very interesting. I felt like a, like a, like a scrapper, like a little runt but very strong because I knew I was smaller than most people, but I was always a lot stronger than most people, even bigger than me. And one time I remember who I, I still always looked at myself as being very thin. And I talked about this before on my podcast. I graduated high school at 135 pounds. And then before you know it, year and a half, two years later, I'm like 210, 220 in that range. And I remember my grandmother had an 80th birthday party and she had her 80th graduation. Now, I was working out, uh, and this is where I ju- all that size kind of jumped on me. And then because my mother is the oldest grandchild out of them all, and then I was the oldest boy great-grandchild. And actually, somebody walked in with another grandchild for my grandmother, her 80th, on her 80th birthday, which was crazy. But, so we all had to give her a rose and stand in line at this massive banquet hall. And they said, Rich, you got to go be one of the last because my mother was very close with my grandmother. She was always with her. She helped raise her Italian immigrants. So they wanted me to be one of the last ones to go up, even though everybody else was kind of in line by age. I said, that's wonderful. No problem. We did it. And they videotaped it. And this was kind of like videotaping a party was in its infancy. So this is like the late 80s-ish. And then I remember going... And watching the video, someone said, oh yeah, we got Grandma Angie's uh, video, her 80th. I'm like, okay. And I'm looking at this guy from the side, whatever. And I I actually started to comb my hair back because I started to lose my hair a little bit. So I had my hair slicked back. So I had a whole different hairstyle and I gained all this weight. And I haven't taken photos in a couple of years, really. This is before the, you know, the phone cameras and all that stuff. And I don't know, I may have gone to a wedding, but I didn't see the pictures. And I went and I'm watching the video and I'm like, who's this guy? This guy, man, he's pretty big. Wow, he's thick, you know. And I'm looking because I'm this guy standing in line and compared to all the other cousins, he's a bigger guy. And, and then it, they zoomed in on the camera and it was me. And I was in shock because I didn't realize what I looked like anymore. Now, I still felt small, but I'm looking at the camera or the television and I'm saying, that guy's not small. He's bigger than most people there. And it looks like he just, he looks like he's uh, like a bull, just the way he walks. And I, I was shocked at that was me. I was, I was really baffled. And I, even though you look in mirrors every day, I was just really, I didn't know that that's what I look like. And that's how I act or I was acting like, which that was a very fun, loving environment. And then you fast forward some time, uh, in 1999, I started making a film called Sore Losers about the underground world of gambling in Chicago. I was supposed to, I wrote it. I was just supposed to direct it. My friend was one of them was supposed to star in it. One of my closest friends was a very big, strong guy. He became very religious and lost a ton of weight. So I basically had to step in the role because I couldn't find anybody else who had the chemistry with everyone else. So to make a long story short, you film for a year and a half. I think I film. And then we went into the editing room and... I lost a lot of weight because my daughter had a liver transplant, but then I gained a lot of it back too. So I was probably 230, 240. And when you go to edit a film, you know, you're sitting in an editing room for, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. But I remember again, it coming up and I'm watching myself, trying to edit myself, which is brutal with a professional editor, thank God. But I'm looking at myself going, holy shit. You know, you're 30 years old. You're Again, I didn't see a ton of pictures except from like maybe my daughter's baptisms or christenings or we went to Disney or something. 
but it's this wasn't even photos again this is video footage of me talking eating doing all these things and even though I was a character I wrote this character but it's it kind of was me so I really got to see how I talked in all my all the good and bad which really made me think about who I was like who I thought I was and how I acted really wasn't like that at all because I even had behind the scene footage of me talking to everybody so I really was able to see and edit or who I was and sometimes you think you're one way in your life but other people see you in another way and I also think a lot of times in your life you may see yourself one way but it's the wrong way it's not really who you are and I, I do a, a, this mastering self-confidence program to help men and stuff. I'm not here to plug that. But I don't think a lot of men realize their behavior when they're wanting to meet women or when they're on a date or when they're doing. I don't care what they're doing in public. I think they think they're this and that, like, oh, I'm cool. Or they think I'm a huge geek. The other way, I'm a nerd. You may be both. But a lot of times, you don't realize how you behave. You're not self-aware. You don't realize a lot of times what you truly sound like. Maybe again now with you know phones, we're videotaping and taking more photos. But again, when you turn that red light on or whatever you want to call it, when you take a photo, you're kind of posing. When you're doing video, you're kind of performing. I'm talking about the times throughout the day when you're either not with anybody or you're just at work, you're just yourself. What are you truly behaving like? What are you thinking? How are you reacting? And a lot of times we don't real we don't even realize how we react or how we behave. Do we come off confident? Do, do we look like a loser? Do we swear too much? Do we uh, are we confused? Uh, you know, do we? A lot of times I only even think people realize they drink as much as they drink. And again, I'm not knocking that, but a lot of people think, oh, I only have one or two a day or I only drink a few times, you know, a couple drinks a week when the reality is it's probably more like seven to 10. A lot of people don't, you know, think they smoke that much. That goes for cigarettes or cigars. Then when you add them up at the end of the month, you actually are doing a lot more (laughs) than you're saying. A lot of people don't realize how much money they're spending on certain things because they're kind of naive all these different types of things. So I was going to say in this, in this podcast regarding this, um, I think what a lot of people need to start doing is, you know, if they want change or they want um, to figure out who they truly are, is study themselves. And I talk about this in fitness all the time is everybody's always kind of watching videos, which, which is great on other people's workouts, reading about other people's workouts, they and studying all these different things on nutrition and healthy living, but they never truly study themselves. They never figure out what really works best for them individually. Like, is seven and a half hours sleep good or, is, or do I need nine? Do I need to eat this amount of calories per day to feel good or less? Or do I need to eat more? When I work out, does this work out give me the results I want or is it just making me more fatigue? Am I building up more muscle doing this or... Am I losing weight uh, because I'm doing too much cardio? All these different types of things, you know, come into play. And back to you really not knowing who you are, I don't think most people really know who they are. I think they think they know who they are. And I shouldn't say it that way. I think they know who they are, but they don't realize a lot of times that they're also something else besides that. That's how I should word that. And some people are just naive. They don't even realize a lot of things that they're saying are setting people off or their actions are very, they could be inappropriate. It could be even the way they eat. They're very sloppy, the way they smell, just the way they act in general, how they treat others. Some's very good. Some's bad. No one's perfect. I'm not here to say that you you, you have to be perfect. But sometimes I think people do expect certain reasons, like ex- wonder why they're in certain situations in their life. And I was one of those guys to say, hey, how do I end up, why do I keep ending up in this situation? I thought I was supposed to be the guy who ends up in this situation. The truth was I wasn't that guy, even though I thought I was that guy. Like, hey, I'm supposed to be the one who gets what I want when I do this. Or why isn't everybody treating me this way because I treat them that way? And a lot of times you realize, Maybe I'm not treating them that way or maybe I am an asshole 
And a lot of people I see that are always pointing the finger, calling everyone else the asshole, is usually the asshole. But we don't even acknowledge that we're the asshole, that our behavior a lot of times is what keeps putting us in these shitty positions. And we don't want to admit it. We just, it's just, I think, human nature too. So if you really, I think, want to start learning about yourself, um, I think even starting very simple, and it would be like, even when I was doing these podcasts, like hearing my voice again, I was like, oh my God, I sound just like my father. But I'm like, you know, is do I talk too fast at certain times? Yes, I do. Other times, I'm almost too cocky and too slow and too lazy. I'm trying to find a middle ground. But if you asked me before, before I heard myself talk, I thought I was fine either way. But then when I listen to myself, I'm like, wow, you're, you know, you're too repetitive. It gets redundant. Um, you say, oh, too many times, or you do this. Um, even when I videotape myself doing YouTube videos, like I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, wow, you blink too much. You did that before and you're still doing that. Um, you don't look people in the eyes all the time when you're talking to them. I realized if I, uh, another thing that I do, I also realized that I don't have a lot of patience sometimes. Um, even when I'm shooting a video for YouTube or something and I'm doing it with someone, I, if it, I could see myself getting very frustrated at times if it doesn't go a certain way and I got to kick back and say, listen, stop acting like this, right? And I think a lot of times when we're, doing things throughout our life, we always expect a certain result at the end. And a lot of times you have to be aware it's not going to usually go where you think. That goes for doing anything in life. And it's just the way it is. And I think that kind of sets us up sometimes to have, to get aggravated, I guess you could say, or start behaving in a certain manner because things may or may not have worked out for you. And back to... I don't want to get goofy on this podcast, but just be aware of that and really start to, and I talk about this more than ever, be self-aware, especially if you're somebody who's always preaching about religion or preaching about politics or just preaching to others, telling them what they're always doing wrong or all these different types of things. Um, just be aware of what you're doing. And again, make sure you are kind of who you think you are to a certain degree or make sure you're behaving in a certain way, I think, um, that helps you, that doesn't hurt you. And I don't think a lot of people realize that a lot of their behavior isn't helping them. It's frustrating others, and it's also frustrating themselves. So that's just my perspective on a lot of people's behavior. I'm going to wrap it up there. If you get a chance, you might want to check out my YouTube channel. I've been putting up a lot of things regarding fitness more than ever. And I'm um, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. And hopefully I didn't get too confusing on this podcast. But like I was saying earlier, um, just be aware because a lot of times you are not who you think you are. All right. Take care.